Hello everyone and welcome to Medical Terminology. We're going to begin our study of learning about medical terminology today and I want to emphasize to you how important medical terminology will be to your future career in the healthcare uh, field. You're going to be using medical terminology on a daily basis. Uh, you'll be looking at requisitions uh, which are documents that explain what examination you're going to be doing. Uh, you're going to be looking at charts. You're going to be talking to medical personnel. And you're going to be hearing medical terms. And you have to be familiar with medical terms because this is the way you are going to communicate back and forth uh, with other healthcare workers. Uh, when you're talking about diagnoses, for example, uh, prognosis, uh, and other uh, things that may be going on with the uh, patient. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So this first chapter uh, of your book is called Basic Word Structure. As far as objectives are concerned, uh, we're going to divide medical terms into their component parts. You're going to see that uh, it's, it's rather easy to determine uh, the meaning of a medical term if you break it apart. So we're going to be look at how, looking at how you do that. So we'll be analyzing pronunciation is very, very important. At the end of this uh, PowerPoint, I'm going to pronounce the terms for you uh, so that you uh, will be able to then uh, repeat them to yourself uh, so that you will be proficient then at pronunciation. Spelling is also very, very important. You are going to be uh, either writing or you're going to be typing into the medical chart uh, different uh, medical terms. Uh, these are medical terms that you're going to uh, put into the chart based on history that you're going to get from your patient. You'll also be looking, as I said, at the requisition or the chart, um, which will inform you uh, as to what is going on uh, with your patient. So we'll be using common combining forms, suffixes, and prefixes uh, to help us do that. So when we talk about important word parts, I'd like you, as I talk about this, to open to pages two and three in your textbook. First of all, the root. The root of a word is the essential meaning of the term. You can see in your book on page two uh, the term hematology. Hemat is the root. Hemat means blood. You're going to also look to the end of the word for a suffix. Okay, a suffix comes at the end of the word. You probably have learned this way back in grade school. And if we take the term hematology again, logi is the suffix, suffix which means the study of. Okay, so now we've got two parts. We've got the root, we've got the suffix. Now we have to uh, join them together, at least in this word, hematology. So let's skip for a moment prefix. Let's look at the combining vowel. Combining vowel connects roots to suffixes and roots to other roots. Okay, so if we look at the term hematology, the O is a vowel, obviously, and it's a very common combining vowel in medical terminology. So pronounced all together, we have the term hematology, hematology. When you look at this word, and we're going to learn this in just a moment, you go to the back of the word first, then to the front, and you read across. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you're going to study. You're going to memorize that logi means the study of. Hemat means blood. And then you've got this combining vowel. So if I define hematology, hematology is the study of blood. Let's go back to the slide for just a moment and let's take a look at the, uh, the prefix. Okay, prefix is a small part added at the beginning of a term. Once again, you probably have learned this way back in grammar school, right? Suffix is at the end, prefixes are at the beginning. Now let's take a look at page uh, four in your textbook, okay, page four. And on page four, we see the term subgastric, 
subgastric. Sub, in this case, is a prefix. Sub means below. Let's go to the bottom of the slide there, combining form, combination of the root and the combining vowel. So let's take a look at page four. Let's take a look at this term, subgastric. Okay. We're going to learn very soon that the suffix ic, I see, means pertaining to. Then, as I said, you're going to go to the front of the word. In this case, it would be sub below. And gaster is a combining, I'm sorry, is a root that means stomach. So in the term subgastric, this means pertaining to below the stomach. Pertaining to ic, below sub, gaster, stomach. Pertaining to below the stomach. So these are the important word roots, your or word parts, your root, your suffix, your prefix, and then your combining vowel. Put it all together and you've got a combining form. So as I mentioned, as general rules, you read the meaning of medical terms from the suffix back to the beginning of the term and then across. Another general rule is to drop the combining vowel before a suffix if it actually begins with a vowel. So if you take a look at this term here, gaster, as I just said, G-A-S-T-R, means stomach. Itis means inflammation, I-T-I-S. So notice then the suffix itis begins with a vowel, so you don't need another combining uh, vowel. So it's gastritis, not gastroitis. Okay, so gastritis. So drop the combining vowel before a suffix if it begins with a vowel. The next one, keep the combining vowel word roots. So here we've got a really long term, gastroenterology, gastroenterology. Okay. Notice the combining O there. Okay. So it's gastroenterology, not gastrent gastroenterology. You can see I can barely say the term. So gastroenterology. Let's take that term apart really quick. Remember, we just learned that logi means a study of. Gaster is stomach and entero is intestine. So gastroenterology is the study of the stomach and the intestine, in particular the small intestine. So here's another term. You may be familiar with this term, electrocardiogram, electrocardiogram. So elector is the root. O is the combining vowel. Cardi is another root. So sometimes medical terms can have more than one root. Another combining vowel, O. And then the suffix in this uh, case would be gram. So if I define this word, once again, I'm going to start at the back. Gram means to record. Elector is electricity. And cardio means heart. So electrocardiogram literally translates out into a recording of the electricity of the heart. There's that term we looked at before, subgastric, which means to under the stomach. So sub is the prefix again, under. Gaster is the root, which means stomach, and then ic is the suffix, which means pertaining to. So we've got the term subgastric, so pertaining to below the stomach. Then we start with some other combining forms, and these are listed on page 5 in your textbook. The first one is adeno. Adeno, now notice they're using the root along with the vowel to give you that combining form. So we've got the term adeno. Adeno means gland. Arthro means joint. Bio, life. Carcino, cancer or cancerous. And cardio means heart. 
I always tell students when they're first learning medical terminology to try and think of a word that you already know. For example, if I look at arthro, okay, what term comes to mind? You may think arthritis. You've heard that term before, arthritis. Well, itis means an inflammation of, arth means joint. So arthritis is translated as inflammation of a joint. Some other ones you may not be familiar with, like you know, adeno, uh, like uh, a common one is adenoma. I think this is listed in your book. An adenoma, oma means a tumor. Oma is a tumor. So if I define it, then a tumor of the gland, adenoma, tumor of the gland. Bio, think about biology. Biology, logi, the study of, the study of what? The study of life, biology. Carcino, like a carcinogen, cancer, something that causes cancer, and cardio, like a cardiogram, is for heart. So try and think of terms that you may have heard before. Okay. My suggestion is these combining forms should be put, as well as prefixes and suffixes, on um, index cards. If we were in class, I'd be having you take out uh, blank index cards on one side, write adeno on the other side, gland. I know it kind of goes back to maybe something you did in, in grade school, but for medical terminology, it really, really helps to make flashcards. Here's some more combining forms, cephalo, head, cerebro, it's the largest part of your brain, the cerebrum, Cysto means urinary bladder. Cyto is cell. And dermo is skin. Once again, try and think of some term that maybe you've heard. Now, some of these may be difficult, uh, but like dermo, like uh, a dermatologist, doctor that takes care of what? Your skin, right? So once again, put these on flashcards, cephalo on one side, head on the other. Dermato again, skin, electro, electricity, encephalo is your brain, and entero or entero is intestine. And as I said before, entero means intestines, but often you use the term entero for the small intestine. Urethro, blood, or sorry, red, okay? And I've said blood because usually you, you think of the term erythrocyte, okay? Site is a uh, cell, erythro is red, like a red blood cell, okay? So erythro is red. Gastro is stomach. Nazo is knowledge. Gynaco is woman or female, once again, gynecologist. And hemo is blood. Another term, because you're going to find that in medical terminology, sometimes there's a couple of different terms. Hemato also means blood. Hepato means your liver. Like if someone has a hepatoma, oma, tumor. Tumor of what? Tumor of the liver. Lapero, abdomen. Leuco, white. Nephro, kidney. So we learned that an erythrocyte was a red blood cell. A leukocyte is a white blood cell. Notice on the term for kidney, there's nephro. We're going to also learn another word, uh, root eventually that means kidney. That's going to be uh, ren or reno, R-E-N-O. Uh, but for now, just know that nephro means kidney. Let me give you an example of a term, nephritis. Itis means what? That's right. Itis means inflammation. So nephritis, inflammation of a kidney. Neuro. Neuro means nerve. Onco. Onco means tumor. Ophthalmo means eye. Osteo means bone. And patho means disease. Uh, once again, try and think of a term like an ophthalmologist, ophthalmologist, a doctor that studies what? Your eye. 
Uh, you got neuritis, inflammation of a nerve, itis. Uh, pathology, logi means a study of. So, uh, so pathology means a study of disease. Psycho means mind. Here's that other term I told you about, reno or reno, kidney. Rhino, nose. Okay, I think of like a, sometimes when you're learning medical terminology too, if you can think of things that might remind you of it, like I think I've got rhinoceros, it's not really its nose, but that long horn that comes out, right? Rhino, nose. Uh, sarco, flesh. And thrombo means clotting. Okay. Uh, one of the terms you see often that they'll have you define in, uh, in uh, books or in uh, exams is uh, rhinorrhea. Okay, rhea is a, uh, a flowing process. So if we say rhinorrhea, it's what? It's a runny nose. Let's move on to some suffixes now. Once again, just as we did with the word roots, putting them on index cards, take your suffixes and also put them on index cards, uh, AL on one side, pertaining to on the other. So anytime you see the suffix AL, it means pertaining to. Algia means pain. There's another term that's common for pain too. You may as well uh, jot this down. That's DYNIA, D-Y-N-I-A. So algia or dynia both mean pain. Here's a term that I've talked to you about already when we talked about the erythrocyte or the leukocyte. Cyte means cell. The next term is very, very common, ectomy. Ectomy means to cut out, to remove, to excise. Uh, a common one is an appendectomy. Appendectomy, perhaps you've heard of an appendectomy. Append means your appendix. So appendectomy means removal of your appendix. Emia. Emia is a condition. Globin, protein. Gram, to record. Ia is a condition. And ic, I see, pertaining to. Ism, a condition or a process. Inflammation is itis, that's very, very commonly used. Logist, a specialist in the study of, like a radiologist is a specialist in the study of using radiation. And logi is the study of. Oma is a tumor or a mass like a hepatoma. Remember that was the uh, liver, hepatoma, tumor of the liver. Opsy, a process of viewing. Osis, notice it's not just a condition. Osis is an abnormal condition, abnormal condition. And scope is an instrument to visually examine. B is a process. It's the process of visual examination. So notice the difference there between scope versus scopy. This is a state of, and tomy is a process of cutting into. Okay, it's not removing like ectomy. Tomy is to cut into, to incise. Incise means to cut into. Prefixes. Anytime you see the prefix a or an, it means no or not. Ought, A-U-T, usually combined with the uh, vowel O, like auto. Ought means self. Dia means a complete or through. So you think of the term Diarrhea, I tell you, rhea was like a flow, a flow what? A complete flow through. So you're flushing out everything, diarrhea. This has a few different meanings. 
they're, they're rather the same if you look at these. This means bad, means painful, difficult, abnormal. We're going to learn soon the term, uh, the word, word uh, root PNEA, P-N-E-A, P-N-E-A is to breathe. So if the patient has dyspnea, dyspnea, difficult or painful breathing. And then we've got endo. Endo means within. Endo means within. So if I take the term, <clears throat> perhaps you've heard endoscopy, excuse me, endoscopy, Scopy means the process of, of viewing where, process of viewing within. So they'll take a scope, put it into the body to view the inside of the body, endoscopy. Exo means outside of or outside. Two very common ones, and then get, the, get these straight. Hyper means more than, hypo means below or less than. So hyper excessive, more than normal, too much. Like if someone is hyperactive, they're, they're, they're moving around too much, right? Hypo means below, less, under, like a hypodermic a needle would be going under the skin. Peri means surrounding. Peri means around or surrounding. So let's take a term, pericarditis. So let's think of that term, pericarditis. Itis means an inflammation of, peri means surrounding, cardi means heart. So pericarditis is an inflammation surrounding the heart. You see, once again, you go from the back, to the front, and then across. Some more prefixes, pro, before, forward, re, back, retro, we think of that term, things that are retro, behind, a long time ago, retro, behind, sub, below or under, and trans means across or through. Once again, a lot of these prefixes or suffixes, uh, you probably have studied along the way in, in uh, grade school, learning these prefixes and suffixes because they helped us to identify meanings of words as well when we were growing up and learning a vocabulary. Take a look at these uh, terms uh, as far as medical scrabble, scramble it here. Pertaining to the heart. So I'm going to give you a second. Take a look at that pertaining to the heart. Did you get the term cardiac? C A R. E I A C cardiac nerve pain. Take a look at that. So I'm going to think about the term, and I learned that pain was algia. Okay. Nerve pain. How about neuralgia? Neuralgia. Deficiency of hemoglobin causes this condition. So a deficiency. I know is uh, the prefix A, how about anemia, anemia. So pertaining to the heart cardiac, nerve pain, neuralgia, deficiency of hemoglobin causes this condition, anemia. A study of cells. So study of cells, study I know is logy, cell, site, how about cytology? Infants are born in this position, head first. Seph means head. Ick is uh, con pertaining to cephalic, cephalic. An inflammation of a gland. Gland is adenitis, okay. adenitis. Adenitis. Here's a, what they call a bonus term here, malignant, di malignant diagnosis. Um, carcinoma, carcinoma, okay, a cancerous tumor. In your book, starting on page six, they, they give you some uh, pictures that I want to draw 
your attention to. So here is a, and this is a, this is a little bit uh, blurry here, but in your book, uh, page six, uh, your cerebrum, it's a really important part of your brain because you, as you see, there's different parts of it that allow for us to um, have different functions like our eye movement, uh, writing, hearing, vision, reading. Okay, uh, Right under the cerebrum, you've got a small part called the cerebellum. And then there's other parts of the brain as well. Now, why the author brings you uh, to this picture is really with the term cerebro okay cerebro cerebrum and in the cerebrum or cerebro area we often unfortunately have something called a cva cva stands for cerebrovascular accident the c stands for cerebro cerebrovascular accident now what is a cerebrovascular accident it's a fancy name for a stroke and with a stroke, you can have a stroke occurring in a couple of different ways. And you can see on these pictures here, in one, the vessel itself can actually uh, burst and a little make a little hole in it, which allows blood then that should be in the vessels to now escape into the tissue uh, of the cerebrum. And this is going to then lead to damage because the brain doesn't like when the blood's not in the vessels. Okay, it likes it to be in the vessels. Okay, so uh, this can cause an area of death, actually, of the tissue called necrosis. Also, you're going to learn that any time that tissue doesn't have a good blood supply, it will, it will die. It will become necrotic. Necrosis means death of. So if you have a blockage in a vessel that doesn't allow blood to flow to a part of the cerebrum, that part of the brain is also going to die. So you can either have a stroke where the vessel, the vessel uh, burst and you have blood entering the tissue, irritating it, causing it really to die, or you can block blood flow and then that also will cause then a part of the cerebrum to die. On page seven, uh, a picture, this is a male obviously, but if you take a look at it, females also have kidneys right we've got two kidneys and on top of our kidneys are the adrenal glands and then we've got two tubes that lead from each uh, of the kidneys one from each of them i should say uh, these are called our ureters that's going to drain urine that's produced in the kidneys into our bladder there is a tube then that comes out of your bladder to the outside um, and in the male, uh, this tube is actually surrounded by another gland called the prostate gland. Um, and then in the male, the urethra goes through the penis. Um, in the female, females don't have a prostate gland. They don't have a penis, uh, but they still have a urethral opening. Let's take a look at the next uh, picture here. Uh, this is actually on, uh, see what page in your, your textbook this is on. Uh, this is actually of something that is uh, done in surgery. And this is on page, uh, let's see. They have it on page seven for the female. Okay. And I don't know if they have this picture in your, your textbook. Uh, or the male, uh, but it's the same process. You can see a scope uh, would be placed in uh, the picture there through the penis. Uh, the scope then is going to allow then uh, to view inside of the bladder. Okay, you can see also in the uh, page seven in your textbook, uh, you can see it for the female, they're putting a scope in. And this is routinely done in surgery uh, to take a look uh, at the bladder area. Uh, they can also put tubes up through the ureters to look at the uh, kidney area. Okay, so this is done in uh, surgery. Okay, so this would be called a cystoscope. Cysto is bladder, scope is the um, device that's going to use to visualize a cystoscope. If we take a look then uh, in your book, once again, it's a, it's a little bit better. It's on page eight in your book. Uh, location of the small and the large intestine. So 
if you take a look at it, your small intestine is pretty much right in the middle of your abdomen and it's all coiled up. It's a really, it's really long. It's 23 feet long, but it's all coiled up. And then around the periphery of your abdomen, that's where your colon is. That's your large intestine. So your large intestine, also called, called your colon, that's about five to six feet long. That goes along the periphery of the abdomen. The small intestine is right in the middle. Now your small intestine's got various parts. You can see it uh, listed there. Uh, you can either pronounce it duodenum or duodenum, either way, that's the first part. Then you have the jejunum, and then you have the ileum, spelled with the letter E-I-L-E. And you're gonna see why that's important because when we learn bones, uh, there's another ileum, I-L-I-U-M, that, that's part of your hip bone. And then you can see in the right, upper, what we call right upper quadrant of your abdomen, a very large solid organ, your liver. Uh, behind your stomach is your spleen. And then separating the contents of your abdomen from that of your chest area, which we call the thoracic cavity, is the diaphragm. Here are your uh, different types of blood cells. Uh, remember, site means cell, erythro, uh, red, so red blood cell. Site means cell, leuco means white. Here are the types of your white blood cells. So leukocytes, you've got different types of white blood cells. You've got eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, lymphocytes and monocytes, and they do different things, okay? But basically leukocytes uh, are uh, there to help us fight off uh, disease, basically. Um, you get in uh, a bacteria, your leukocytes come into action uh, to help uh, fend off the, the dangers of that bacteria within the body. Uh, your erythrocytes, they're gonna help carry oxygen uh, throughout your bloodstream. And then at the bottom, then we've got thrombocytes. Thrombocytes is the more fancy term for something called platelets, and platelets are going to be involved in the clotting process for your blood. And then we've got two pictures of hematomas. Okay, the first one over on the left-hand side. This is pronounced subungual. Sub of course means below. Ungual okay is going to be uh, pertaining to the nail, the, the fingernail, so subungual hematoma. Subungual hematomas, I uh, usually get these when you hit your uh, a nail bed with a hammer, you're nailing something in, uh, and this would be called a subungual hematoma. Um, hematoma is also just a fancy term for a black and blue mark, really. Um, in this case, we see a hematoma from a broken rib. So whenever you break a rib, you end up having some blood then escaping into the tissue, uh, that blood then can cause a, a hematoma as well. There's different ways that you can look inside of the body and different ways that you can move things, move things around, whatever needs to be done. Uh, the first one over on the left-hand side, this is a laparotomy. Now remember, otomy means to incise into. So in this patient, an incision was actually made into the abdominal cavity. Uh, whatever had to be done within the abdominal cavity uh, was performed. And then it was closed by means of uh, staples here. You're going to see patients that have had um, uh, surgery. They often will have, instead of uh, sutures, they may have staples which are used to close these larger incisions. More times than not today, whenever they can, uh, we perform what's called laparoscopy. With laparoscopy, you're going to have an incision into the abdominal cavity. Uh, they're going to fill up the abdominal cavity with a gas to kind of uh, um, bloat the belly, blow it up. And then basically what you're going to do then is you're going to have the scope with a light in there uh, the doctor is going to be able to visualize. Uh, there's also uh, devices that can be put in for cutting and removing pro different things. So this would be a laparoscopy. But the point being is that you've got a laparotomy, which is an incision into the abdominal cavity, and a laparoscopy. There's an incision for the scope, but it's much more, or much less, I should say, invasive. 
On page 13, we see the uh, device here, which is called an ophthalmoscope. Uh, if I take the term apart, a scope, a visual uh, device to visualize, ophthalmo uh, means the eyes. So as you can see then, the doctor here or uh, medical person is uh, shining then the light into the patient's eye using an ophthalmoscope to check out the contents or uh, the areas of the inner or back area of the eye. We talk about the term arthritis, and arthritis if we take the term apart, is an inflammation of a joint space. Uh, you can see a picture of a normal joint uh, over on the left. Okay. In any normal joint that moves freely, uh, we have something called synovial fluid. So the synovial fluid is going to allow us to uh, have lubrication when we move then our different joints. Notice that at the ends of the bones, we've got a, a layer of cartilage. The joint space is going to be filled up with the synovial fluid, um, and then it's, it's encapsulated. There's a little capsule around the joint itself. When you have osteoarthritis, unfortunately, what's going to happen is the cartilage breaks down. Uh, the bones come closer together, don't have that nice lubricating fluid, uh, and it causes a lot of pain with movement. A frightening almost picture here uh, in the slide. It's on page 16 uh, in your textbook. Uh, this is called Graves' disease. And with Graves' disease, um, often you get um, protruding eyes. Now, Graves' disease is hyperthyroidism. And if I think about what the term hyper means, hyper means uh, larger, more than. Uh, so you've got too much secretion of the thyroid gland, which is going to then cause of uh, this bulging or protrusion of the eyes, which is actually called exophthalmos. Uh, here, once again, we had uh, the picture of the scope uh, going into uh, male. Uh, we've seen this on a previous slide. And then we have a very important slide here, and this, uh, this is actually talked about in your uh, textbook, you need to be able to create plurals out of singular forms. Okay, So this is on page 10 in your book. This is not the exact chart. Um, but if we take a look at it, if a word ends in A, okay, we don't just add an S to it. Okay, If it ends in A, you change the ending to AE. So vertebra, which is a bone of the spine, if you're talking about a collection of them, we call them vertebrae. So notice the difference. Vertebra is one. Vertebrae is many. If the word ends in X, EX, or IX, we change it to ICES. So index is not indexes. It's indices. Indices. IS changes to ES, so diagnosis becomes diagnoses. ITIS, ITIS becomes IDES, so arthritis is arthritis. NX changes to GES, so phalanx, which is a little bone finger or your toe, becomes Phalanges, so one phalanx, many phalanges. O-N becomes A, ganglion, changes to ganglia. U-M changes to A, so ovum, which is an egg. If you're talking about many eggs, it's ova. And then if the word ends in U-S, you change it to I, so alveolus which are the little mini sacs, microscopic sacs in our lungs that allow us to breathe. Alveolus is one, alveoli is many. Let's take a look on page 33 now, because as I mentioned before, a very important part of medical terminology is being able to pronounce the terms uh, properly. If we were actually in class, we would go around, I'd have you... Uh, go around and I'd have you uh, say the term uh, one at a time and I'd correct any pronunciation since we're not in class I'm going to be saying the 
uh, terms for you. So please turn to page 33 in your textbook. And I'm just going to go through the list saying the terms so that you can hear them. So the first term is adenitis. Adenitis. Adenoma. Adenoma. Anemia. Arthralgia. Arthritis. Arthrogram. Arthroscope. Arthroscopy. Autopsy. Biology. Biopsy. Carcinoma. Cardiac. Cardiology. Cephalic. Cerebral. Cerebrovascular accident, CBA. Cystoscope. Cystoscopy. Cytology. Dermal. Dermatitis. Dermatosis. Diagnosis. Diameter. Dysentery. Electrocardiogram. Electroencephalogram. Endocardium. Endocrine glands. Endocrinology. Enteritis. Erythrocyte. Exocrine glands. Gastrectomy. Gastric. Gastritis. Gastroenteritis. Gastroenterology. Gastroscope. Gastroscopy. Gastrotomy. Gynecologist. Gynecology. Hematoma. Hemoglobin. Hepatitis. Hepatoma. Hyperglycemia. Hyperthyroidism. Laparoscope. Laparoscopy. Laparotomy. Leukemia. Leukocyte. Leukocytosis. Nephrectomy. Nephrology. Nephrosis. Neural. Neuralgia. Neuritis. Neurology. Neurotomy. Oncologist. Ophthalmoscope. Osteitis. Osteoarthritis. Pathologist. Pericardium. Platelet. Prognosis. Prostate gland. Please note it's prostate, not prostrate. Prostate gland. Psychosis. Renal. Resection. Retrogastric. Rhinitis. Rhinotomy. Sarcoma. Subgastric. Subhepatic. Thrombocyte, thrombosis, transdermal, transgastric, and transurethral. So lots of terms there. As I mentioned, pronunciation very important and also spelling is very important as well. So make sure that you uh, look at the words. Uh, define these terms, go to the back of the word, to the front of the word, and then read across in uh, defining these words. 
So we've covered a lot in this first chapter. Uh, make sure that you do the tasks and assignments that are assigned to you for uh, this week. And uh, I'll present our next uh, PowerPoint, uh, which will we'll continue. And we'll talk about organiz organization of the body uh, in our next PowerPoint. But first of all, we got to get through chapter one. So uh, do the tasks, do the homework, um, and uh, I will be talking to you soon.